This fascinating machine with its unusual futuristic aesthetics first took to the skies on August 27, 1990. For some time, it flaunted in magazines as a promising aircraft complex YF-23 of Northrop and McDonnell Douglas. And for this, aircraft had every reason. Now everyone familiar with aviation knows very well that the fate of the project was unenviable. It lost in the Advanced Tactical Fighter Contest, or ATF for short, in April 1991. The winner's also well known to all, it was the YF-22, later reborn as the F-22 Raptor, the first production fighter of the fifth generation and whose characteristics still cannot be surpassed by the subsequent fighters of this class. Although the ATF competition was completed almost 30 years ago, the opinion that the military made a mistake then has not subsided, and the winner should have been the YF-23. Maybe in this case it wasn't what happened with the F-22 Raptor. Having taken to the skies in 1991 and accepted into service in 2005, it was already phased out in 2012. So why did the F-23 lose? Let's try to look at this aircraft objectively to see if the Pentagon made a mistake. Two YF-23 prototypes were built. Each had its name, Grey Ghost and Black Widow II. The two means that this is the second Black Widow. The first was built by the company in 1943. It was a night fighter P-61 Black Widow, which proved itself well against German and Japanese fighters and bombers. Northrop management wanted this name to help its brainchild also find a happy tale, but it was already a completely different era. There were eagles in the sky, the F-15, battle falcons, the F-16 and hornets, the F-18, and the poisonous Black Widow spider did not fit into this company. The F-4 Phantoms of McDonnell Douglas also flew theirs, so the Grey Ghost didn't fit into the modern world either. This is a joke, of course. The reasons for the defeat of the YF-23 were more serious things. Let's talk about them. The first is the concept. The YF-23 received the Integral Aerodynamic Scheme, a diamond-shaped middle wing with flaps cut off and V-shaped wingtip. The F-22 corresponds to a normal aerodynamic configuration with a high-rise trapezoidal wing and tail, including widely spaced, outwardly inclined keels with rudders and full-circle stabilizers. Although both aircraft developed around low observance technology were very different from their fourth-generation predecessors, the YF-22 looked significantly more conservative in comparison to the truly revolutionary Black Widow. The American military is not characterized by British conservatism, nor is the post-Soviet desire to save money on military developments. However, no one likes unnecessary risk either, especially when there's a much simpler and clearer option. Oddly enough, the second disadvantage for the YF-23 is the flight performance. Already we hear the cries of indignant connoisseurs of aviation. They say that the YF-23, already on the second flight, showed a supersonic cruise speed of 1,056 miles per hour. That is without the use of an afterburner. Recall that the speed of sound is 767 miles per hour. The YF-22 could not do it, and now the F-22 is incapable of doing it. And what about the combat radius of action? The YF-23 has 800 miles and the F-22 can only attack at 530 miles. And what are 530 miles compared to, for example, thousands of miles in Russia? That's all true. But let's make a little excursion into history. As we know, the famous F-4 Phantom II, for all its merits, could easily lose a close combat fight to the older Soviet MiGs. Therefore, the US Air Force was well aware of the consequences of the YF-23's lack of vector-driven engine, the elongated fuselage of the Black Widow II, because of which the plane is often compared to the SR-71, does not look favorable in this regard either, especially in comparison with the hard-hit YF-22. Even a quick look at the latter reveals in it a born air fighter which is perfectly suited for close air combat. In addition, according to experts, the diamond-shaped wings of the YF-23 reduce the maneuverability of the aircraft. The third and perhaps the most important disadvantage of YF-23 is low visibility because the use of stealth technology is at the core of the fifth-generation fighter concept. Both Northrop and Lockheed took a very careful approach to stealth performance. There's a popular argument that the YF-23 is less conspicuous than the Raptor. Indeed, the engines on the YF-23 recessed into the fuselage are a huge plus in terms of reduced infrared stealth. However, in the case of radar visibility, which is much more important, Black Widow 2 seems to be an outsider. 
that despite the characteristic design of the air intake, in the case of the YF23, you can see the engine compressor blades with the naked eye, which does not improve low visibility. In addition, the prototypes received baffled lights. Also, the frontal area of the Y23 was larger than that of the YF22, so it was more visible in close air combat and more vulnerable to enemy radar detection. Of course, it would be naive to draw deep conclusions from the two prototypes during development, invisibility could both increase and decrease. Meanwhile, the set of measures to reduce radar visibility on the YF-22 is more tangible. It remains to add that we'll probably never know the exact numbers of the Raptor's stealth, so it's too early to put the final point here. However, there is one more disadvantage that's as important as the lack of low visibility of the YF-23. It's the cost. The Grey Ghost and the Black Widow 2 were more expensive than the Raptor prototype. And as we know, the enormous cost of producing and operating the F-22 Raptor caused it to stop production. If you say that in the process of refining, the cost of the YF-23 would have come down, then you're wishful thinking. Usually the price only goes up, and there's no reason to believe what would have happened otherwise. And finally, the last factor. True, it's no longer from the field of technical characteristics, but let's say strategic considerations. Experts and ordinary aviation enthusiasts often emphasize the enormous experience gained by Northrop in the development of the low-level strategic bomber B-2. That's true. But first it's worth saying that Lockheed, by the time it built the YF-22, already had a stealth aircraft on the books. The company was a pioneer in the field of stealth aircraft, putting the F-117 Nighthawk on its wing. So the experience argument doesn't work. The more important thing is that many Northrop specialists were completely absorbed by the B-2, the most complicated military system of its time and the most expensive warplane in the world which would have had all its priority aviation projects under Northrop's control. It was not just inconvenient, but banal and dangerous because it could undermine the defense capabilities of the country. And after the Raptor was no longer in production, meaning Lockheed Martin no longer needed to spend human resources on its modernization, it was again tasked with creating a new stealth fighter. But that's just our guess. But even without that factor, the Pentagon had several other reasons to choose the YF-22. What about the YF-23? After losing the competition, the two YF-23s built were turned over to NASA's research center at Edwards Air Force Base, California. Both machines were in storage until 1996 when they were transferred to museums. One YF-23 can now be seen at the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force in Dayton. The second prototype was loaned to the Western Museum of Flight in 2004. But let's not end this video on such a sad note. Be that as it may, the YF-23 was the first fifth-generation fighter in history. After all, the Predator's ancestor, the YF-22, saw the skies a month after the first flight of the Black Widow 2. Do you think the YF-22's victory over the YF-23 is fair? Or did some subjective factor intervene here? Write about it in the comments below. If you've enjoyed our video, please like it so it can be viewed by as many people as possible. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch new interesting videos about modern weapons.